when I go into the meetings of AA or I'm around people that need help, I want to I want to touch them. I want their life to change because God, Jesus, the Holy Spirit changed my life. I want that for those people that I meet. Welcome to I've Got a Story to Tell with Dan Skankus. This is Season 2, Episode 4. We were headed down to uh, Bonanza, which is right by the Salvation Army. And the first encounter I had uh, with this uh, vast amount of people lined up from Bonanza, and there's a railroad trestle about a mile or two miles from uh, Bonanza and Maine, uh, were tents, people living in cardboard boxes. The, the missions were full, and this overflow of people were living however they could. They had their own community up this mile and a half on each side. And you know, when you walk into those environments as a Christian, the feeling is, I want to help these people. I have to do something for these people. And I remember this one guy, his name was Joe, and we called him Indian Joe. And uh, he was a young man, good-looking guy. And... uh, he had an addiction with alcohol and gambling. And so we got to know him and uh, he was a pretty intellectual type guy. And he developed a, a pot addiction for marijuana. And uh, so this drug that became legal in our society today, I saw it at work in this young man's life. My tenure down there was 15 years of going down on those streets. That's how long my ex and I. So Joe was in our life from when he was 20 years old to approximately 35 years old. And uh, we would always try to get him to understand that, hey, Joe, man, you, you can't. And he'd smoke it day and night. He would smoke that dope day and night. And so... As we would see him over the years, what progressed was this young, good-looking guy gaining weight and getting heavier and heavier. And then after about 10 years, he had incapacity. He didn't have the capacity to really walk because now he's so overweight. And talking to this guy that had an intellectual level that uh, was really interesting to talk to him, uh, he no longer could get it together, and all he wanted to do uh, was smoke that dope. We prayed for him. He would allow us to pray for him. We would, the women would baby him, trying to get him out of that box. They would, they would try to to talk to him and say, you know, you got to do something with your life. But he was addicted. That drug that they say is non addictive is addictive drug. If you take a drug and it makes you sleep, you need that drug, whatever that drug is, because whatever the components are. But anyway, um, Joe ended up uh, passing away in the box, cardboard box. So that's one human being. So <clears throat> in the interim of knowing Joe in all of those years um, after he passed we reflected back on the different things that we tried to um, and he was a likable guy He at any stage of that um, 15 years that I knew him really a likable guy uh, people around him liked him the people their community liked Joe and uh Many times I would talk to him, and it was like an overpowering thing after a while. There was no communication left, and it was so very difficult to see this human being that you had these great conversations with no longer have the capacity to talk to him, 
and uh, it was heartbreaking. The whole the whole thing is heartbreaking. The thing with working on the streets, most of the time your heart's broken uh, because the Joe is multiplied by many people, and the women of the streets are the heartbreak. That's the most heartbreak I've ever had in my life, especially elderly women on the streets that are so congenial and love Jesus. And for some, un- for some reason, which I know, they were abused or people took their finances or whatever, and there they are. They're out on the streets. And... Um, We got to love a lot of those people. Uh, I I just want to reflect on how God's heart is broken. (laughs) When I go back there, I'm sitting here and go back there. You know, if one human being's heart's broken, and many people in my ministry group, we had broken hearts many times, people passing away, people getting mugged by gangs, uh, terrible things that happen out there. Uh, If our hearts are broken like that, I could imagine God. You know, and and there's always, you know, where sin abounds, grace abounds even more. And we've seen grace abound on those streets. But the cruel part about it is when people turn away from God on the streets, Uh. You're listening to I've Got a Story to Tell with Dan Skinkis. We'll be right back after these messages. Carson City's Night Off the Streets Homeless Shelter is beginning for 2021. Knotts has been a ministry of many of the local congregations for the past five years. It is our effort to reach the least of these and to provide shelter from the cold. The year before Knotts opened, Carson City had four people freeze to death because they had nowhere to go. Since Knotts has opened, there have been no exposure-related deaths because they had somewhere to go. The shelter begins on November 1st at St. Teresa's Catholic Church. 
A man and a woman are needed for each shift for three shifts a night from 8.30 to 11.30, from 11.30 to 3.30, and from 3.30 to 7 in the morning. Ask anyone who's volunteered in the past. Everything that scared them about getting involved did not happen and all sorts of blessings they never anticipated were revealed. You don't need any experience in the homeless ministries. All training is provided. Now is the time to begin thinking about volunteering. Here's how you can sign up. Welcome back to I've Got a Story to Tell with Dan Skinkus. Oh, this is going to be so good. I, You know, we talk about the streets and how tough they are and really brutal they can be. But the upside of this is just what I remembered. Before that Christmas, there was a Thanksgiving. Well, I have to give my ex-wife the credit because what she would have an idea to do for the homeless people because she was homeless herself would be like people around her saying, no way, we can't do that. That's impossible, you know. Uh, how could you have a pajama party for homeless people? I mean, we got moral issues here. Is it going to be men and women all together? And So I remember this uh, cook from the Flamingo Hotel uh, said... He can't, He was in a church member, but he said, oh, man, a black, this uh, young black guy, he was just an awesome dude. He said, oh, I'll cook for everybody. I said, uh, we only have this four-burner electric stove, and uh, it was in this rec hall, but it wasn't set up as a kitchen. It just had this little sink. Oh, no, we'll do it all. He said, uh, don't worry about it. So... Thanksgiving comes, and uh, Marvin was his name. I just thought about it. He's, I mean, they had donated uh, 15 turkeys. Well, let me say 10 because I exaggerate. 10 turkeys, the whole nine yards. This guy starts cooking the night before, and he's cooking all night long into the morning. And he's... Talk about dedicated homeless people. They're surround. They're around him. And uh, Thanksgiving comes, and I'll never forget. This happened more than once. The whole thing is set up. The dishes are done. We have to do the dishes with the garden hose outside, making sure everything's clean and perfect, you know. And so it's all set up. So the people start coming from the mission down uh, on Main Street, Salvation Army, up to Henderson in a van, 17 at a time. That's all we can transport. So we get up to about 120 people, and I'm, I'm saying, man, we're not, hey, Marvin, we're not going to have enough food. He said, hey, don't worry about it. Yeah, don't worry about it. God will provide. So... Uh, as these people are coming through the line, man, I don't believe we did all it. I don't believe this happened. So they're coming through this line. And uh, people are saying, you like mashed potatoes? Yeah, gravy. You want gravy? Yeah. Could I have a little more? Sure. You know, and, and as we're giving a little more out of compassion, I'm looking and the line's not getting too much smaller. And I'm saying to Marvin, man, we, we got we to gotta, uh, watch it because we're not going to make it. happened about five times in my life in that kitchen we keep scooping it out you know and marvin says no just give give him the food give him the food <laughs> look at the bottom of that pan it's not getting empty i'm not telling you no story these people we're thinking there's never going to be enough for the last 20 people everybody got a plate of food the same amount, I am telling you. So the cleanup has to start. <laughs> and uh, like I said, this wasn't a kitchen that had the big 
deep uh, sinks or any of that. We had to clean all of this up with the uh, hoses and soap and all of that in the courtyard and, you know, and uh, some of the congregants weren't too happy with us because, I mean, now we have not only to have the homeless there, now we have all of this cleanup to do. <laughs> And like, so we finally clean it all up, and now it's time for uh, the pajama party. <laughs> you know, there's so much pride in the streets. You know, these people, you think they're all beat up and could care less. Well, no. We had all these pajamas, brand new, all donated. I think there was like, uh, maybe at the end, a lot of people, uh, some people went home. I'd say 60 people for the sleepover. Well, you know, that sleepover started 5 o'clock at night. And <laughs> some of those women had to have that color. It could not be another color. And they were like, no, it has to be that color. And it has to be this. And it, it was so funny. And they were all trying to get this and finally all the men left the women got dressed and then the women left and all the men said, you're talking like 60 people that was a lot of people you know and so i remember it started at five o'clock at night everybody brought their sleeping bag and if you could get a visual all these sleeping bags on the floor for 60 people and so the church band comes in, the church worship band, and starts playing, and everybody's singing. Man, it was like the greatest songs. All these homeless people were all singing, and we look at the clock. It's like nine, ten, eleven, twelve, one. We must have praised the Lord. I'm telling you, for six to eight hours of just. You know, and then they had some movies they'd show, and it was just this night of wonderment for me how that day went was that God provided all, out of nothing, out of donations, people giving the turkeys, giving this, giving that, uh, people bringing stuff in there. And the end product of was that, you know, all those people, the men on this side, the women on this side, everything was in order, perfect order. No, there were no arguments. There were no, that spirit of... You're listening to I've Got a Story to Tell with Dan Skinkus. We'll be right back after these messages. Psalm 40, verses 4 and 5. Happy are those who make the Lord their trust, who do not turn to the proud, to those who go astray after false gods. You have multiplied, O Lord my God, your wondrous deeds and your thoughts towards us. None can compare with you. Were I to proclaim and to tell of them, they would be more than can be counted. My name is Ron Roberts. This passage tells me, gives a lot of uh, comfort, I think. You get to, all your, your cares are, are gone. If you place your uh, trust in God, what, what do you have to lose? As we mentioned this morning, if God is for us, who can be against us? It gives us great comfort. And this is what I take from this. I always think of this when I, when I am, am in, a, in a problem or I'm in, in despair even. I always think, if God is for us, who can be against us? And when we place our trust in God, we will always be with Him. I think that's very reassuring.
I've Got a Story to Tell with Dan Skinkus. But I know one thing about people that I have met uh, in, in those dire straits. When they find Jesus, they need Jesus because that power of the Holy Spirit, I'm talking about a monster, this addiction and the drugs and has a thousand tentacles. And you think that psychology is going to take care of a hundred of them and it doesn't even take care of five of them. And over here's the next problem and over here's the next problem. And now you have one answer and that's the Lord Almighty. And the reason I know that, because that's what had to happen to me, was that when God came into my life with all his power and all of what I need on a daily basis, I live in that today because that's the power of recovery. I've Got a Story to Tell with Dan Skinkis is a Presby Pod production of Aunt Betty's Studios, a ministry of First Presbyterian Church, Carson City.